Hey everyone, welcome to another episode. Rendering line in OpenGL is kind of harder than it sounds. There's actually a couple of different ways of doing it, and they all have their advantages and disadvantages. So when I wanted to render lines, my first idea was let's have a look at Godot source code and let's see how Line2D is being rendered. And I was kind of surprised to see that it's basically just generating a mesh and just rendering a bunch of triangles based on the points and the thickness of the lines you set. It does have a few really interesting pieces where it can do like rounded edges and corners and stuff like that with triangle fans and so, but it's basically just triangles. And I thought, well, this can't be quite right. Uh, there has to be a better way of rendering just simple lines in a 3D program. So I started looking at the documentation for the OpenGL API, and sure enough, there's a GL lines parameter you can use to draw lines in OpenGL. The thing is, is that graphic cards aren't really made for that. So the options are pretty limited. There's no fancy rounded endings or even you can't control the line thickness that much and of course forget about like anti-aliasing and stuff like that. It's kind of limited and you can't really use it for anything else than debugging purposes maybe. So I thought, okay, well, how about making a shader? Maybe you can just pass a bunch of points to a fragment shader and then you calculate the distance of each pixel in your screen to one of the points in your lines and then you decide if it's part of the line or not. Well, that kind of works, but it's pretty expensive. I mean, either you have to have very small triangles only where your line is, but then you have to generate those triangles, or you have a whole screen shader, like a post effect, where you pass the points, but then that means that for every pixel in your screen, you have to calculate its distance from your line points, and then you have to do some um, sign distance field calculation or something like that to determine if the point is a color of the line or not. And then how do you pass this information? Like what if you have a lot of lines, do you want to pass all this information inside a uniform and have it to set it every frame? That doesn't quite sound right. Of course, you could generate the line maybe using a geometry shader, but if you do that, then it's basically the same thing as what Line2D does, but on the GPU instead of the CPU. Besides, Godot doesn't support compute shader yet, so you what, wait for Godot fall? So my conclusion is the best way to do it is really the way Godot is doing it. Just render a bunch of polygons based on the width of your lines. And that's pretty good for most cases, but in the project I was working on, I wanted to draw the outline of a polygon which means I needed my line to loop back at the end. And there's no option for this in Line2D in Godot. And if you do it by adding the start point twice at the end and at the beginning so that it's gonna loop back, well, depending on your line thickness, you're gonna get some kind of strange results at the connecting point of the start and the end. So how can you make this look good? Well, I figured Godot is open source, so I can maybe just take the C++ source and port it to GDescript which I did, and then I can modify it to add a looping option. And it was actually easier than it looks. I mean, the code looks really intimidating, but most of it is already taken care of. I mean, it can already do rounded corner and edges and calculates everything for you. All I had to do is add an extra pass if you're looping that instead of capping the start and the end, I wanted to add an extra segment and then connect them like you connect all the other segments in the line. And that went pretty well. And for a while, that was good enough for me. But then I started wanting to have different thicknesses for each of my line segments. And I wanted more like a graph than a polygon. Basically, I wanted various lines intersecting with each other of various thicknesses. Basically, I wanted everything. And I realized, well, that's another whole challenge in itself. After thinking about it for quite some time, I realized that the main problem I had was creating pretty intersection between different lines and different thicknesses. And well, I didn't even know what I meant by pretty intersection. I just knew that overlapping simple lines just created all sorts of ugliness. So I started drawing some samples on paper of how I thought 
three lines of different thicknesses should look like when they connect to each other. And I started looking online on the kind of issue or maybe the solution that someone might have found for this kind of problem. And that led me to realize that what I was trying to do is a very common problem in city builder games where the player can draw roads and then you need to connect the roads with each other and you can have like a single lane road connecting to a four lane road which is different thicknesses and all of this has to look pretty and usually has to be generated dynamically. The thing is, is most of the solutions I've found somehow found ways to reduce the size of the problem by putting limitation on how you can build the roads in the game. For example, they have to be built on a grid or they are only like a certain number of widths. So you only have to deal with like two lane and four lane intersection, for example. You never have to deal with like a highway intersecting another lane or something like that. And anyway, I couldn't find any really generic solution to my problem. So when I started labeling my lines, so the top one would be A, and then I would go clockwise and name them B, C, D, and so on. And I started looking at them, not like just lines, but actually lines with thicknesses, which means that they're basically rectangles. And I started looking at how these rectangles should be connected with each other. And what I realized is that, well, the right side of the A line should connect with the top side of the B line. And these two sides should just connect where they cross each other. And if I then do that for between the B and C side and the C and A side in a three line configuration, and solve the intersecting points of each of those in a clockwise fashion, then I end up with kind of a solution for how the lines should connect with each other. So my rectangles become basically one big polygon with all the points following the shape. Then if those points just create a simple polygon, I figured I could maybe just take these points, put them inside a Godot polygon 2D and just let Godot triangulate the resulting polygon. And that worked. I could have really fancy intersection and I can play with the transparency and there's no seam or anything. But then I encountered another problem. What do I do to put all of these intersections together? Because a line is not a single intersection. It's always two intersection, one at the end and one at the start. Even if the start point, for example, only has a single line, it's still an intersection of just one line, basically. If I use the method I've just described, well, if I use it for every intersection, that means the lines are, again, going to overlap each other because I'm gonna end up regenerating the same line twice for the start and the end point. And after thinking about it for a while, I realized that there's really no way around it. I have to know the solution of the start point before I can calculate the end point. But to be able to calculate the start point, I need the start and end point of all the line participating in the intersection, which means they need to have the start and end point of all their start and end point, which means that I'm stuck in kind of an infinite loop. If the points are actually making a loop, there's no way for me to find a starting point that doesn't have any other starting point or end point. I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, it, in my head it makes sense. But my point is there's no real way to make sure that I have everything calculated before I start, unless I loop several times over all my intersections, which I wanted to avoid for performance reason. But then I realized I can draw the resulting intersection points that I calculated without drawing the rest of the line, basically drawing the minimum intersecting bounding box of my intersecting points. So what I did is I go over every vertices that are part of all my lines. And for one vertices, I get all the lines that are part of this intersection. And I calculate the minimum bounding box or the minimum bounding collision intersection polygon. And I render that, but I store the result in a structure and then the next time I hit the same line, well, I know I've calculated already 
the uh, starting point, if you will. So now I can take the endpoint, calculate the endpoint, and then draw the rest of the segment all the way to the intersecting point I calculated in the first time I hit that line. Now, well, that's pretty complicated to implement. And to be honest, it doesn't work all the time. There's still a bunch of edge cases that I haven't really taken count of. For example, if you have two parallel lines intersecting and there are different thicknesses, well, <sighs> there's no way for me to connect the two lines and I don't know what version of it would be pretty. Maybe if I had a, a gradient that would go from one thickness to the other, but that would need a whole different way of handling the intersecting points. I'm not quite sure how to detect these edge cases yet. So there's still a lot of work to be done, but um, I'm, I was pretty happy with the conclusion I came to and the exploration I made, and I thought this could be useful for some, for some other people, especially if you're trying to do like a road network for a city builder game or something like that. So that's why I decided to share the code with all of you. You can look at my GitHub where I've made a little sample project with some of the stuff I've been talking about. So I hope it gives everyone a better appreciation of software like Inkscape that deal with this kind of rasterization all the time. And that's gonna be it for this week. I hope you enjoyed and see you all in my next episode. Bye.